Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I have a video for you where I just really want to break down and go over some general best practices and guidelines for building data pipelines in the modern data engineering space. So I spent a lot of time going into specific use cases, but there are some general paradigms that you can apply to your data pipelines, really no matter where you're building them, no matter how you're building them. These are just general overarching themes that you're gonna to wanna to carry through whenever you're designing a data pipeline or any movement of data between two different systems. Um, so don't worry about making sure your specific system is covered today. These are really meant to be broad and applicable across a wide range of technical uh, requirements because everyone has their own special unique stack out there for, for data. So without further ado, let's get into it. Now, before you even start designing your data pipeline, the most important thing you can do to lay a solid foundation and make sure you don't do any anti-work is to really understand the requirements and objectives of your data pipeline. So this is, you know, the typical things you might think of like your data sources, identifying all the different data sources you want to be pulling data from, their formats, how often you expect those data sources to change over time, uh, as well as the data destinations, you know, where that data needs to be delivered, whether it's the data warehouse, data lake, analytics tool, uh, things like transformation needs. So, hey, what are the different transformations we're going to need to do to get our data into the final format that we need it in? Um, and also things like aggregating, cleaning steps, really understanding, hey, this is all the different things we're going to need to go through to get the end result that we want out of this data. And then also things like performance requirements. What is the latency of this? You know, how long is this pipeline allowed to take? Do I need to run this pipeline every second of every day and you know, one pipeline run finishes and another pipeline run starts? Or do I need to only do it as needed? Or do I wanna do it daily and make sure it's done by 7 a.m. so you have all the data in time for market open? Those are all important requirements. And then you also have things like business requirements. You know, hey, what is this actual data serving? Who is, who is going to be monitoring this data? How do we make sure that it's getting to that end user, those business users, the reporting dashboard in a way that's really easily accessible and consumable by those people? So we're not just producing data for the sake of producing data. Um, and these requirements, you know, some people don't think about, they just think, oh, I gotta get data from here to there. But it's really more important and more impactful to truly understand hey, this is why I'm getting the data there, and this is what that data is gonna be used for once it actually arrives at end location. Now, the next guideline you're gonna to wanna to follow is making sure you're choosing the right tools and technologies for your use case. Selecting the appropriate tools is really crucial, and sometimes you, know, you might think, hey, I can just use this one tool for, you know, for any use case, right? A lot of people like to choose one you know, big platform and then try to cram every use case into it, even if it's not really well designed for that platform. Um, and so choosing the right tools can make either building your pipelines a pleasure or it can make it your own personal hell. Um, and so kind of the four main areas you're gonna to wanna to think about, you know, figuring out, hey, what is the right tool for me in this area is first, what is your ETL or ELT tool that you're gonna use? Um, you know, what are you gonna to use to manage really the whole data pipeline, those different steps and the different systems involved with it? Um, or, you know, maybe just doing the initial extraction and loading, and then you, know, you have DBT to take care of the transformation. But here you're gonna look at things like Airbyte, like Talent, uh, like Apache NiFi, um, really anything that's, you know, designed for doing ETL workflows. And then kind of in that realm, um, and almost as a replacement, you know, if you have the skills to work with an orchestration framework like Apache Airflow, that's probably the best tool out there, I would say, for managing that ETL process. You can you know, still leverage tools like Airbyte for doing that extraction, but then have Airflow you know, load that data into Snowflake, kick it off a DBT job, and have one interface that can monitor all the different tools within your ETL pipeline. Um, and you know, there's other frameworks other than Apache Airflow, that's just the one I think has really become kind of the standard in the space. So that's why I always talk about it. Um, but there are other tools out there like Prefect, like Daxter, like Mage AI for, you know, different kind of specializations there if you don't really want it to like, you know, just do it all. Then you also have data storage solutions. You gotta have somewhere to put your data. Now this can be kind of two flavors, I would say. You have data lakes where it's gonna be a lot of object storage, you know, Amazon S3, and then something like Apache Iceberg to monitor across it 
or your SQL, NoSQL databases like Snowflake, BigQuery, MongoDB for kind of what you would think of as more traditional data storage. Then you're going to need something to process that data. Um, and this is either going to be something like batch processing with Apache Spark, where you, know, you, you spin up a Spark cluster, run your job, and process all your data at once, or in, you know, in batches, like once a day. Or you could have a framework like Apache Kafka or Apache Flink, where every time a data source produces something, that data is immediately processed um, in that just individual unit of data. So choose your flavor there. You know, some people need that immediate refresh of data. Some people don't need that. Some people just need data refresh once a day. And, you know, that also has a cost implication if you need to constantly be running it. So again, make sure you have the right tool for your use case. Now, the next thing you're gonna to wanna to think about when designing your data pipelines is planning to ensure data quality and consistency across these six areas of consistency, completeness, uniqueness, timeliness, validity, and accuracy. And there's four main ways that you can really ensure that. Number one is incorporating data validation checks, making sure you have data validation checks at various stages within your pipeline to make sure you have data integrity, not just at the beginning and end, but at every stage throughout that data pipeline. So that allows you to catch if an individual stage starts screwing up your data integrity, you can catch that at that individual stage rather than waiting to the end and then having to kind of backtrack and figure out where in the pipeline it got messed up. You also have schema management tools. So make sure you're using, doing rigorous schema management, uh, enforcing and validating data structures to make sure, hey, data that we're bringing in fits our existing data structures. And if it doesn't, uh, what's happening to the data to make sure that it does fit that data structure. Um, you also have error handling. So making sure you have really robust error handling mechanisms that will log, alert, and then retry failed operations. So you have a much cleaner and clearer way to resolution when something goes wrong, uh, rather than really having to parse through a lot of obtuse log files and not clear information. And then finally, something that's really become more prevalent in data pipelines and just the data industry as a whole is, is data lineage. Data lineage is a really powerful tool to understand the flow of your data, how it's being transformed over time over different systems. So implementing it throughout your pipeline and, and maintaining it can really help aid in debugging and auditing, especially over the long term, um, understanding how your data is changing over time. Now, the next step is for designing really great data pipelines is everyone's favorite and is implementing monitoring and logging. While no one really loves monitoring and logging, at least in my experience, they're really essential for maintaining and troubleshooting data pipelines. And so you have kind of up here an example of what a you know, basic data processing dashboard would look like. Within a dashboard, you're gonna to wanna to have, again, three main components here. So number one is a comp comprehensive logging stack, uh, maybe using something like Splunk, where you're logging all the detailed information around the data processing stages, errors, performance metrics in a single place where you can filter for, you know, for errors, for different types of errors, so you know exactly what's going on and you can get exactly the information you need. Then also, layering in something like real-time monitoring, using a tool like Prometheus, like Grafana, like Datadog, to monitor your pipeline's health and performance in real time to make sure that you have a constant view of exactly how your pipeline is performing and you can set up alerts, which is the next step, setting up alerts and notifications on those real-time monitoring tools so that you don't have to actively sit there and monitor them. Instead, you'll receive alerts if there's a failure, if there's performance degradation, if you breach an SLA, to ensure you have timely interventions without you know, committing resources, just constantly monitoring and watching these data pipelines. So once you have your pipelines up and running, they're in place, you're also going to want to be constantly optimizing for performance. If you don't optimize for performance over time and you know, make it a constant uh, battle, then you can very quickly run into situations where your pipelines are really out of date and you have a massive, massive hurdle to overcome to get them back up and running. And so three kind of main tips that you can you know, use to optimize for performance, or a few more actually than three is, first identify bottlenecks. Um, you know, figure out, hey, use a Gantt chart, look at which processes are taking the longest and then see, should they be taking the longest? A lot of times people won't recognize, hey, there's this huge inefficiency that could be solved by a single line of code. Do those small changes that can have big impacts. Additionally, use efficient data handling methods, like da use efficient data formats like Parquet, Avro, compression techniques to help reduce the storage uh, cost of those different data files, and then also improve the processing speed of those files when it's time for them to be processed. Additionally, Parallel processing. 
Implementing parallel processing wherever you possibly can really helps to speed up data ingestion and transformation. And if you've properly broken up your sequential tasks into you know, small parallel uh, units of work, you can run, you know, let's say break one massive data set into 10 smaller parts, you can run and process that data in a tenth of the time, um, which can really, you know, obviously help vastly increase the speed in which your pipelines deliver. And then resource management. Make sure you're properly managing your resources like CPU, like memory, like IO, to again, avoid bottlenecks and ensure optimal performance. Make sure that each component of your pipeline has the right amount of resources to enable it to run as fast as humanly possible. Now, another really fun topic that you're always gonna to wanna to be thinking about in when designing data engineering pipelines is security and compliance. They really need to be integral parts of your pipeline design because if you don't plan for it from the start, changing pipelines to be security compliant down the road is a huge bear. So the first thing you wanna think about you know, when you're designing your pipelines is data encryption. How is your data going to be encrypted both in transit and at rest to protect sensitive information like customer data, stock data, internal reports, whatever. Also, think about defining access control. Uh, implement really strict access controls, you know, lease permissions-based uh, access, uh, authentication mechanisms, single sign-on, identity providers, to really restrict access to data for users so they can only see data that is explicitly pertinent to their actual job, but isn't, you know, they don't have just broad access to get any data because that's how you end up with compliance out, uh, end up out of compliance. Then, on the topic of compliance, Make sure that when you're designing your pipeline, you know what the relevant regulations and standards are for both the data and the region that you're in. So things like GDPR, if you're in Europe, HIPAA, if you're dealing with you know, uh, US patient data, uh, there's a whole array of different regulations out there. And so make sure you understand which ones you have to conform to. And that'll really help you stay ahead uh, instead of you know, being caught unaware down the road. Now, the last category I have to talk about here is CICD and implementing SDLC best practices into building your data engineering pipelines. So the software development landscape has put out you know, a whole wealth of different tools and systems that can be used to enable more efficient development. Why not use them? You have tons of different collaborative tools like version control engines like Git to make sure, hey, you have a repeatable path to production for people to deploy code, but to have it verified and checked and tested before it ends up in production. Um, and then also collaboration platforms like JIRA and Confluence to help in, enhance teamwork as well. Additionally, maintain really comprehensive documentation on each step of that development process. You know, understand the process for understanding, maintenance, code, make sure you, you know, you're, you're uh, tagging all your code and, and have comments in that. And then integrating those tools in with you know, things like Git, building full CI CD pipelines. So continuous integration and Continuous development pipelines really have a wide array of benefits for the business because they allow you to have a programmatic control for anyone that wants to deploy code to develop on their own, deploy that code, have a secure and uh, you know robust integration process to test that code, make sure it's up to snuff before it gets deployed, but also in a way that allows many different people to all push code at the same time. And then you as the admin can reconcile those different uh, code pushes and make sure that only the best ones make it into the end product. And then also having a robust CIC pipeline allows you to automate a lot of those testing processes so that you don't have to actually spend a lot of manpower to test your pipelines and do that critical work, but you still get really well tested uh, code because you have those automated tests built into your pipeline. And those can be things like unit tests, integration tests, or end-to-end -end tests. Um, but that is really all I have for you today. You know, building data pipelines in the modern age really requires a careful balance of you know, design, technology selection, and making sure you're using the best practices to make sure you're building robust, scalable, and maintainable data pipelines. Um, and so by understanding requirements, choosing the right tools, ensuring data quality, implementing monitoring, optimizing performance, securing data, fostering collaboration, and automating processes, you can really create effective data pipelines that drive valuable insights and support data-driven decision-making. So I hope you've enjoyed this video today. I hope you've learned something, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Data Guy out.